Dance Arts of Columbia provides fitness fun for everyone from three years old to adult. Dance Arts is a good environment where the friendly staff makes you feel comfortable. Dance Arts feels that dance is an art form that you can experience firsthand by learning tap, jazz, modern, musical theater, lyrical, and ballet. Dance Arts urges you to enjoy a sense of accomplishment while getting fit and having fun. For class information, call 875-1569. Dance Arts of Columbia, serving Columbia since 1979. to Radio Friends on Monday, February the 15th. This is President's Day. The banks are closed and there is no mail. And in honor of President's Day, I want to introduce you to Larry Brown. <laughs> when everything's closed. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Brown, good to have you here. Singer, songwriter, and storyteller. Today, you got a story for us, right? Well, in, in honor of, of remembering our presidents this month, and it is also Black History Month. Yes. And given that this is a presidential election year, I do oh, have isn't it? <laughs> I do have a presidential story. Okay. So here is Larry Brown with a presidential story for you. Now you may recall that that there are lists of presidents with various characteristics. And one of those that caught my attention not long ago was how many presidents belong to the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan? Well, and some of you may know that there was some accusation that our own Harry Truman had belonged to the KKK. Well, the legend is that he had joined, as folks did in the 1920s, for a $10 membership, but then, then he revoked his membership and sent his money back in. Now, most biographers of Harry Truman say that's legend and not necessarily true. But in the 1920s, the KKK was a formidable political president presence. They were after presidents, they were after other political officers, and they were involved by trying to get folks elected who would be against Catholics, against immigrants, against blacks, of course, against Jews, and promoted themselves as being 100% American Protestants. And so they were appealing to politicians. But that story about whether Harry belonged to the KKK is not true, I think, based on some pretty good reasons. One was, Harry had a friend in Kansas City back in the early 1900s, 1905, named Edward Jacobson, who was a Jewish businessman, a young businessman. And he and Harry became friends, renewed their friendships when they were together in the armed services in 1917 in Fort Sill. After the war, Harry and his friend uh, got together and formed a hat shop in Independence, Missouri. They were haberdashers. Well, his friend Edward Jacobson also maintained contact with Harry all through the years when Harry was a senator and eventually president. And it was his friend Edward who convinced Harry to support the movement to found the country of Israel, not an activity that the KKK would have approved. But a second reason is Harry also had a friend when he was in the military by the name of James Pendergast, Pendergast. And Pendergast was nephew of Tom Pendergast who ran the Kansas City Democratic political machine, a Catholic family. And they were very supportive of Harry Truman's activities when he was a county judge and later when he ran for the U.S. Senate, was elected, and when he became vice president. Well, again, supporting Jews and Catholics and being supported by Jews and Catholics would not have put him in a good position with the KKK. Now, some of you may recall that Harry had been a county judge in Jackson County, Missouri, and then was defeated when he returned to that position and defeated by a coalition against him who indeed were supported by the Klan, the Shannon uh, political machine in Kansas City who tended to be Republican and again was supported by the Klan kept Harry from being reelected. But then next time the election came around, he returned to his position as county judge. And as you know, then he was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1935 and was serving uh, as a senator. Sometimes he was referred to as the senator from uh, Pendergast, but he began to break his ties and relationships with them while being a U.S. senator. And then, as you know, he was chosen to be vice president to serve under President Roosevelt and only served a few months when President Roosevelt died and there was thrown into the position of being the United States president. Well, when it came time for re-election in 1947, Harry Truman, out of his consideration of the times in which he lived and his experiences and many of his friends 
in Missouri who were of a diverse background wrote his, his report called To Secure These Rights. It was 10 points having to do with civil rights. And it began to be a momentum toward putting a civil rights platform in the Democratic Party uh, running their elections coming up in 1948. Well, it was that intention that began to get some of the members of the Democratic Party a bit concerned. And among them was Strom Thurmond, who was a Southern Democrat, who then broke away, formed his own political party called the Dixiecrats. Now, at the same time, there was a progressive wing of the Democratic Party under Henry Wallace, the previous vice president, who also didn't like Harry Truman. On the virtual eve of the election, the fall of 1948, Harry Truman, by executive order, executive order 9981, integrated the U.S. military service. By executive order, because he was not getting cooperation from Congress. And he went on, in addition, in the next months following, to also by executive order, require that all civil service opportunities with the federal government be integrated open to all, and further, that all contractors with the federal government be open to all. Well, you know the story about the election of 1948. With the Democratic Party divided, it was assumed that the Republican candidate Dewey would be elected, as the polls had predicted. And you know the famous sign of Harry holding up the newspaper saying, Dewey elected president. Well, Truman won by a margin of several million votes, even though he'd lost a couple of million votes out of the splits in the Democratic Party. Well, when one looks back, one realizes that Harry Truman, by executive order in establishing these various aspects of civil rights, perhaps became the most important civil rights president since the Reconstruction era. So whether or not you want to argue about he belonged to the Klan, Hmm, I'm not sure that matters because of his civil rights record. Or perhaps it's a reminder to all of us, we have plenty to learn about diversity and maybe looking back in our own life, even if we have some issues, changes for the better are always possible. Thanks, Harry. Mm, what, a, what a beautiful story. I, I didn't know that, uh, the points that you were passing along about Harry Truman. So he most likely had more to do with civil rights than anyone else. Well, when you look at the record, you go back to Reconstruction period, of course, yeah. when many minorities and blacks were put in position, but a lot of that was undone, and many, much of that undone in the early 20th century uh, by presidents such as Woodrow Wilson, who was not a good track record on mm -hmm. race relations. Uh, and even though Roosevelt was popular and growing, again, what actually was instituted, like integration of the military, no, that was Harry Truman. Yeah. Larry Brown. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Uh, if you want more information, Larry Brown, you're uh, available online. What's yes, your uh, email address? Brownstory at hotmail.com. Okay, and you can get CDs and DVDs if you like. I'll, I'll come to you. All right, Larry Brown, thank you so much. Tomorrow, Osher Lifelong Learning, and we're going to talk about the uh, how do we get a signal from the radio station to the internet. Pretty interesting bit. We'll see you tomorrow. Our director today, and always, Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio with Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director, Ariel Sierra. And our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mouser.